Counterattack at Sun is the highest rated combat mission Market Garden scenario, according to the Blitz website. The scenario portrays the largest tank battle that ever took place in the Netherlands. But the true star of this scenario is not a Panzer Brigade, nor a British Cavalry Regiment. Instead, it's a tiny bridge. This bridge. It's the choke point from hell for the attacking German Panzers, as this terribly exposed bridge is the only place where they can cross the Dommel River. It is the great equalizer in a battle that, certainly in the opening stages, heavily sways towards the German attacker. And this is not just clever game design, although you'd be excused if you think so. No, this bridge being the only crossing site fit for tanks is the well-researched conclusion of the scenario designer. But since the combat mission Market Garden module came out, new research about this battle has been published. And it sheds new light on the question whether this bridge really was the only one that the German panzers used on that morning in September 1944. It's now clear to me that I've been asking the wrong question. So let's find out and see what historical events led to this battle, how this battle earned the road north the nickname Hills Highway, and how this scene from Band of Brothers, this moment from A Bridge Too Far, and even this bit from the video game Brothers in Arms are all connected to this combat mission scenario, Counter Attack at Sun. So the objective of Operation Market Garden was to capture a series of bridges with airborne troops to allow the Allied army to quickly advance into the Netherlands. The first of these was at the little town of Sun, and it was the objective of the 506 Parachute Battalion to capture it. On the 17th of September 1944, they parachuted in just to the north of Sun. After intense fighting to get through the town, the Germans blew up the bridge at the last possible moment, an event depicted in both A Bridge to Far and the Brothers in Arms computer game. Captain Winters, commanding officer of the well-known Easy Company was there. Winters, with Nixon next to him, dove to the ground, while wooden beams and chunks of debris fell around him. What an awful way to get killed, Winters thought to himself. Now, in media covering this event, the bridge is always shown to be a race bridge, while in fact it was a rotating bridge. And this is relevant, because it meant that there was a concrete pillar that the bridge rotated on still standing in the middle of the river, with building materials that the Dutch underground had been hiding in the warehouse of a resistance fighter nearby, a rickety footbridge was then built with wooden planks and ropes. The next day, the 506 moved south into Eindhoven, leaving behind a platoon of engineers to prepare the site for a Bailey bridge and an infantry platoon for security. In the evening, the 506 made contact with the British Guards Armoured Division in Eindhoven. The 14th Field Squadron of the Royal Engineers arrived at Sun not much later, and they began immediately to build a Bailey Bridge. The engineers worked all through the night and partly thanks to the pillar that was still standing in the middle of the canal, the Bailey Bridge was done the next morning. The tanks of 30th Corps then started to cross and head north. So how did the Germans respond to this Allied breakthrough? The only effective German formation within striking distance of the Allied columns pouring over the Sand Bridge was the 107th Panzer Brigade, commanded by Major Freiherr von Malza. He had been given the difficult task of attacking a cross sound to slice off the head of the British 30th Corps, cutting the supply route of the Allies up north. And so, on the 19th of September, the 107th slowly rattled towards Sand, with a battalion of Fallschirmjäger infantry riding along on the tanks for support. Von Maltzan knew that he would have to cross the Dommel River somewhere if he wanted to get to San. Therefore, later in the day, he sent a small group of half-tracks in the direction of Eindhoven to check one of the bridges there. And so, five German half-tracks appeared at the bridge behind me. They were spotted by a Dutch gardener named Willem Hickspoor, who saw one of the Germans get out and start to walk around the bridge. It was clear to Hickspoor that he was checking to see if the bridge would be strong enough to support German tanks. So the gardener went up to the German soldier and actually convinced him that the bridge would never be able to hold German tanks. And at some point the Germans bought it and they turned around and went away. The bridge was replaced with a new one in 1984 and since then it is named after the brave gardener. So the 107th continued north, still looking for a suitable place to cross the Dommel and commence the attack on the Allied supply route. Leading the way was Leutnant von Bockdorf. And this is where, five minutes into the video, we finally enter the area of the Comet Mission scenario map. But although we are now at the location of the scenario battle, the events that I'm describing now all took place on the evening before when the scenario battle was set and are not part of it. Once at the Wilhelmina Channel, von Bockdorf found the auxiliary bridge over the channel to have been blown up a few days earlier by other Germans. This detail is in the Comet Mission map, it's even highlighted in text. 
With no other options available, von Brockdorf ordered his panzers to the left and onto the channel bank to commence the attack. Now, the channel bank was only 50 centimeters wider than the panzers, so there was absolutely no room to maneuver. With its first shot, the lead panzer took out a truck on the bridge, exploding it and stopping traffic completely. Moving slowly, the German attackers approached the Bailey Bridge. And the situation of the American paratroopers started to look dire, as they had little more than bazookas for anti-tank weapons. However, elements of the 81st anti-tank battalion had landed just moments earlier. Immediately after landing, they were informed that there were German tanks near Son, and an anti-tank gun was rushed in from the landing zone. The German attack was well underway when it arrived and it quickly set up. With its very first shot it took out the lead panzer from across the channel, after which it blocked the way for the other tanks. At first the infantry was to continue the attack, supported from a distance by the tanks that had to shoot around the lead tank. But as it rapidly grew dark the situation became increasingly confusing and the attack was postponed. And with this, finally, we enter the starting point of the combat mission scenario counterattack at Sam. Because the next morning at first light, the 107th Panzer Brigade resumed the counterattack from the evening before, and it remained to be seen if the good fortune of the American paratroopers would last. If you start the scenario as the American defender, you will find that your setup has already been taken care of by the scenario designer, and he did not make this stuff up. It's as historically accurate as one could wish for, as far as I can tell. See. George Koskamaki is an author who was present at this battle and who wrote several books about the war, including a detailed account of this battle. And he drew a map of who was where. Glider Infantry C Company on the right flank by the mill? Check. They were marched in from the same landing zone where the AT gun had been rushed in had landed. Engineers to their left? Check. They often had to perform infantry duties under circumstances like this and they were no strangers to combat. A company of the 506th on the northwest side of the bridge? Check. They had force marched in from Eindhoven to reinforce the sound bridge that night, thereby dodging the deadly German bombing of Eindhoven that took place that night. Glider Infantry A Company on the north side of the canal? Check. And those are just the broad strokes. On closer inspection, I found a lot of details from Koskamaki's account woven into the setup, such as the fact that much of C Company's gliders hadn't made it to Sam. So the company was really just 1st platoon, the company HQ and some heavy weapons. The one AT gun on the north bank of the canal while the rest was on the south side is another such detail. And here's a nod to the events that took place on the evening before. The destroyed tank that had been taken out during the previous attack is on the map and it seems to be in the right place. Now, my plan is to recreate the American actions of that morning as best as I can and see if the outcome will be different from the historical outcome. But as soon as I hit start, I kind of run into trouble. When you start the scenario as the American defender, then nothing much happens for a few turns as the German panzers make their way from their starting location to the bridge where they can cross the Dommel River. The infantry meanwhile crosses the river a bit further south, over the only other bridge across the Dommel on the map. It is a footbridge only, and the scenario author writes about this in his designer notes that he believes this bridge to not have been able to support tanks. If it had been able, then the panzers would have used it during the attack the evening before. This conclusion does make sense to me. But as my scouts watch the panzers cross the bridge at the channel one by one, I do start to wonder something. See, historically, things look grim for the American paratroopers when the panzers attack. They had been under attack for more than an hour when two British tank squadrons arrived just in the nick of time and, spoiler alert, eventually drove the German tanks off the field. But if this terribly exposed bridge at the channel really was the only way for the panzers to cross the Dommel River, and two British tank squadrons were hot on their heels, then how on earth did the panzers manage to retreat over this bridge in good order without being shot to bits? I'd think that that would be impossible. Checking no less than three books that cover this battle didn't answer the question of where the German tanks had crossed the Dommel during the second attack. 
Koskamaki, for example, writes that the anti-tank guns held the panzers at a respectful distance, but what does that mean? The seemingly only clue was the map by Koskimaki that had these rather minimalist arrows drawn on it. But what did those indicate? That the tanks had, in fact, been able to cross at the footbridge? Then why hadn't they done so the evening before, like the scenario designer has pointed out? It's a proper battlefield mystery to me, but where to begin solving it? Like in all good investigations, I decided to go to the scene of the mystery itself. I have a digital map of the area from 1944 and I want to check every possible crossing site across the Dommel River on the map to look for answers. We know that the Willem Hicksport Bridge is the furthest point south where the 107th checked for a possible crossing site, so we'll work our way north from there. Going north from the Hicksport Bridge, the first potential crossing site we come across is a bridge at a water mill. The water mill still exists to this day. But it didn't take me long before I realized that this in no way could be the place where the panzers crossed the Dommel. It is a beautiful place though. Then if we move north a bit further, we come to the bridge that is on the scenario map as a footbridge. Perhaps it had been able to support tanks, but the reason the Germans didn't use it the evening before was because they had overlooked it. When I came to the bridge, I was in doubt at first. The bridge looked like it could take some weight as the supports are made of steel. So I put a few pictures up on the Battlefront forums to see what people thought, and the answer was clear. This bridge was by far not wide enough for a panther. The bridge could probably fit in between the rollers. And even if this is not the same bridge as the one that was there in 1944, I don't think someone would replace a bridge with a smaller one. Visiting the potential crossing sites only seemed to confirm that there were no other places to cross the Dommel for tanks than the bridge at the canal. I also wrote emails to several battlefield tour guides who give battlefield tours in this area, even regarding this very battle, but none of them responded to my questions. I then came across a book that specifically covered the 107th Panzer Brigade in the precise time frame when this battle takes place. If I was ever going to find the answer to my question in a book, it would be this one. But it was published in 2016 and all copies were sold out. Well. I could buy a second-hand copy, but the prices are insane. The cheapest second-hand copy goes for some $300, that's six times the retail value. Sheesh. It then dawned on me that although one author had an English shouting name, Jack Didden, the other author's name, Martin Swartz, was rather Dutch. A bit of Google foo and I actually found the email address of one of the authors. We corresponded for a bit and he confirmed that the answer to our question was in his book. And he still had a few copies at home. Alright, so I've got the book. The author was not at home, so I bought it from his wife. But I'm very excited to go to some, open it up and see if our answers will be there. So on the day that I went to Saan to check the potential crossing sites, I picked up this book on the way there and I opened it for the first time when I arrived. Um, there's so much information in here and it's now clear to me that I've been asking the wrong question. This book changes everything. On the 20th of September in the early morning, an American and a British officer were scouting the area south of the canal to find out where the Germans could cross the river. Right here at this location, they spotted a large group of soldiers moving through the fog towards the Sun Bridge. One soldier nodded to the officers and the Brit asked the American if those were his boys. But when the Americans said they weren't, they realized that they were looking at a large group of Germans. Now, in the fog and darkness, the officers got out okay, but this does tell us something. Namely, that it seems likely that at least part of the infantry crossed at the water mill. The German infantry went into the attack, hitting the left flank of C Company, who were in for the fight of their lives. The open terrain didn't give the attackers any cover, however, and C Company held them off for a good hour. Then, eight panzer tanks appeared on the battlefield, and this is the moment of the big reveal. The German panzers never crossed the Dommel that day. Instead, they supported the infantry from across the river. This clears up so much. It now makes sense that Kaskamaki wrote that the AT guns held the panzers at a respectful distance and it now makes sense that most German tanks could retreat unharmed. So the AI plan for the German attack we now know doesn't match history. But like I said, I read a number of books that had chapters about this battle and I too thought that the panzers must have crossed the Dommel somewhere. 
The conclusion that the authors of this book come to is completely out of left field to me, but it is so well researched. This is the first book that gives such a clear overview of what happened during this battle and had the book not been published a few years after the Market Garden module came out then I'm sure that the scenario designer would have read it as well. Let's take a further look at how this battle developed historically and see how this is portrayed in the scenario. Stay tuned to see the actual battle damage that this very objective farm sustained during this battle in the real world. So the Germans were repeatedly attacking the paratroopers roughly around the area of the mill, supported from a distance by eight panzers. Traffic at Hell's Highway had, once again, come to a standstill. The smoke that you see in the background is smoke from a fuel tanker that had been hit by a panzer. This meant that badly needed supplies such as the boats that should already have been at Nijmegen this morning for the planned river crossing were being held up. Long story short, historically two squadrons of 30 of corps who were on their way to Nijmegen were recalled south to help deal with this next attack. One squadron of Cromwells crossed the Bailey Bridge and took up positions in the town and near the windmill and slugged it out with the panzers. Another squadron moved onto the panzers flank, although the canal bank made hitting them very hard. If you play as the German attacker, you will find that the Allied AI plan reflects this, albeit in slightly different locations. See, it is of course assumed that the player will cross the Dommel River, so the tank force that moves to flank you from the north doesn't take in position here like their historical counterparts, but rather here, where they can actually flank you once you've crossed the river. Already facing opposition from two sides, the Germans then spotted Sherman tanks of the 44th Royal Tank Regiment moving in from the south. To avoid getting boxed in from three sides, the Germans then pulled out their panzers. The Allies then organized a counterattack to clear the fields of the Fallschirm Jäger that were taking cover in the ditches and bushes. Of course, when I played the scenario, I tried to recreate this counterattack. Heavy fighting then took place over this farm, which is still there to this day. And if you look closely, then you can actually still see the battle damage that the farm suffered at the time. Now, at the beginning of the video, I promised that I tell you where Easy Company from Band of Brothers fits into all this. During the last push that the Germans made at Saan, tanks from the Hussars crossed the Dommel River at, well, maybe you can guess it. That's right, they crossed right here. Who knew that this bridge was strong enough for tanks after all? Simultaneously, another tank squadron along with Easy Company was to push north and take Nunen as part of the plan to deal with the 107th once and for all. Once at Nunen though, the German opposition was much too strong for Easy Company and its accompanying tank squadron, which were Sherman tanks historically. Winters later described never having seen so many German tanks at once. They had to pull back some distance and then spent the day holding the line until they broke contact when it got dark. Their job after all was ultimately to protect the corridor and not to take territory. The outcome of the battle had been disastrous for the Germans. In all they had lost 3 panzers, they had 60 dead, some 200 wounded and about 100 men were captured. These lost ones mostly during the Allied counterattack. The Allies had suffered 2 tanks lost, 2 men killed and 28 wounded an incredible achievement of the 101st and the Hussars. So I showed a preview of this video to the scenario designer who goes by the handle ASL Veteran. We talked about the challenges of finding out what happened during a battle in enough detail to make a historical combat mission scenario about it. In this case he told me it had been a challenge even to figure out on what side of the channel the battle took place. After all, the Dommel River of course crosses the channel, so any description about bridges across the Dommel near the channel could refer to either the north or south channel bank. Eventually the scenario designer figured it out when he found this picture of the panther tank that was taken out on the first evening and from that correctly surmised that the panther must have been on the southern channel bank. In fact, to illustrate how challenging it can be to figure out what happened, one of the campaigns in this module contains a scenario that portrays the attack on the sound bridge that took place on the evening before, made by a different scenario designer. And that scenario places the battle on the north side of the channel. The two designers did communicate about this, but both stuck to their own conclusions. Because of deadlines, starting over from scratch was not an option anyway. 
If you enjoy these combat mission slash battlefield travel videos then make sure to watch my previous one here if you haven't. Or take a look at one of my other videos here. Again, what a journey in a literal and figurative way this video was to make. Thanks for coming along and I'll see you in the next one.